Hey folks, welcome to Tuesday, the 5th of October 2021. And uh, yesterday was a bit of a red letter day for equities and uh, more downside broken down through the 100 EMA on spoos and uh, holding below the 100 EMA as well on the Dow. Um, tech, obviously the big uh, loser on the downside yesterday. Um, you know, it's, you saw NASDAQ down a little over 2%. Um, with the woes of Facebook having a whistleblower, and added to that, we had this um, we had this problematic update. Um, well, supposedly an update gone wrong on the Facebook servers. Um, so we have well, we we still have outages on Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp, and of course all of those products within the Facebook ownership, and uh, obviously on the same tech stack. Uh, so you know. Uh, while we are having a, a, a limited bounce on the Nasdaq uh, through this European morning, um, you know I think the calls yesterday for downside, uh, I think were 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 well proven. Um, so let's look. Let's have a look at these charts. I mean, I think um, you know there's an awful lot of talk on this energy crisis. Um, you know, adding to the inflation woes. Uh, then you know really having ill effect on on equities as a general classification of market um you know gold taking a bid yesterday yeah i mean you know uh, while while gold there was a great uh, move up yesterday at around three o'clock you can see in the top right of my screen um it's it's a, it's a very tricky trade it's a very tricky trade if you're trying to get on tight risk uh within the day time frame you know, I think, yeah, the 1752s came in and support there at three o'clock and, and a nice push up. Uh, but really, you know, I think there were easier opportunities to get on, namely looking at the Dow here yesterday. You know, we were looking at longs from the 30, uh, 34200s on numerous occasions. Uh, this last uh, Wednesday came in, nice bid back up to the 50 EMA area. Um, but then largely supported uh, when we came into Thursday and Friday, just it slipped off. Now, now you know, now uh, on the Sunday reopen on Monday, we have pulled back into that area. And by the time we came into the pit, uh, op what the cash open on equities, now uh, you can see here just unsustained push on the buying side uh, above the 34 200s and you know, the 100 EMA was sitting at that price pretty much yesterday. You know, down we go. Um, so I think we added uh, on the losing side, sort of from that point um, down. I think we were, yeah, 1.75% down in the Dow. Nothing as steep as the losses on the NASDAQ. For me today, I think if you do see this Dow trying to make a recovery um, again, back up at this area, the 34 200s, um, I think I think it's just not going to be able to hold the buying above, and the buyers just have way too much to do now. Should they even push this back to the thirty four two hundreds? I like the shorts here, and uh, eventually for this week working back down to thirty three five oh twos. Um, you know, it's just all about getting the timing right on that one. Uh, do I think we're going to sell off from the thirty three nine one nines? Um, and sit here all the way up to the open. I don't think so. I think we could easily get bid up um, in, in the remainder of this European session. And, you know, the inverse then of what we saw all the way up in equities was we would go offered in the euro session and we would go bid and put in new all time highs in the US session. So now what we're seeing is an inversion of that where we're kind of getting uh, bid up a little bit in Europe and then we're going offered in the US session. Right. So um you know food for thought there food for thought for sure um but these equities are very much on the back foot um just to give you a glimpse here on the spoos as well um on the daily chart you can see now we're under this 100 ema the 20 looms heavily above for a retest which really you know these retests up at the 20 have been sold you know i mean uh, so if we do get on up here, I think that 4321s in conjunction with the 100 EMA in this area here, uh, you can see that, you know, the buyers have it all to do. So if we get bid up into here um, during this, uh, the remainder of this European session and, and through to that sort of half 12 midday uh, sort of marker um, in London, I think, uh, you know, the, the sellers are going to be working 
uh, offers on on this market below the 100 EMA. You see here yesterday um, at around 8 a.m. that little bid um, and then came into the U.S. session went offered straight down. So now we have this whole area in gray acting no longer as support but but as resistance. Um, so just be careful uh, trading in and around um, the spoos. Uh, you know I think this is generally the line in the sand. Even if the spoos does. I'll just pump this up onto the whole screen here. Even if you do get the spoos working on up um, to the 43.59.50s, I just see this market as being weak here. And obviously notwithstanding headline risk, um, what could we have here that would be positive? Maybe getting a deal done on the on uh, on the funding for US government. Um, you know, but that would be thin grill really, to be honest. Um, so I think we're skewed to the downside in these equities. Now, uh, something that speaks directly against that, though, is this on the daily, oh, sorry, on the daily on NASDAQ here. Look at this, right? As foretold, we have this, this big, big uptrend from the low 2nd of uh, November 2020, uh, 5th of March 2021, and that's given us this big old uptrend, which has not been broken. And yesterday and today are no exception to that rule. We're bit up now, 0.4% uh, up on uh, on Europe, on the, on the pre-market on NASDAQ. So I think with this uh, touch that we've had, I think I think the bounce uh, should come in on NASDAQ. But I mean, if we have continued worries on tech, namely from Facebook, I think that is going to be way on this sector. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you this, basically, if we come down and press here and close like even a 30 minute candle or a, well, probably let's say an hour candle below trend here um, and below the 14 414s uh, and a half, then I think we're going to break this trend. And, uh, you know, that might be quite sensationalist to say, but that's what I see. That's just how I see it. Um, so, you know, uh, do I think we have the right conditions for that? Um, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think, I think, you know, while we've had uh, this sort of falling out of bed for tech and a couple of uh, constituents of the NASDAQ, the big boys like Amazon and Facebook down yesterday, I think there's just good value there. And you can see this trend really does speak to that, you know, so um so yeah, I mean, I, I'm not betting against equities at this time. I'm not betting against NASDAQ at this time. I think it'll be interesting to see what happens on a retest on the 100 EMA. And you know, if we start to reject on the 14703s, uh, that could be quite interesting um, because then we could start to like retest on the trend down here. We had a similar activity like that on a gold trend earlier this year of similar magnitude. Um, so I think, yeah, it's it's a bounce day for the NASDAQ. I think uh, really we don't have anything from a fundamentals perspective to really uh, throw this market uh, fully out of bed. Uh, so yeah, that's the NASDAQ. Lovely bounce here that we looked at yesterday uh, for the longs. Uh, oil, I mean, look, oil, fantastic, fantastic day yesterday for oil. Um, OPEC. Uh, as we all know, OPEC committing to not raise uh, production uh, despite calls from the White House, despite calls from Joe himself. Uh, you know, we were up uh, quite a significant amount yesterday. Just let me get the exact figure on the day. I think we were up uh, about 4%. Just let me uh, make sure that that's right. Uh, yes, it is right. 4.06% up on the day yesterday. And no signs of stopping. We don't really have any resistance to speak of in this area. I mean, like going all the way back here to, well, uh, really, where are we going all the way back to? Uh, going back to, let's see, 7684s. Yeah, all the way um, back to uh, 2018, November 2018, we fell down from this, from the 7980 handle. But there really is no significant... Uh, resistance in this area at all. We just kind of, uh, let's see, get a couple of days here. Um, bah, 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 bah. We're in the 90s there, uh, 70s. Here we go. Just zoom on out and I'll show you the activity uh, back at that point. Um, 
yeah in here so it was really quite a, a quite a directional move i can't remember what exactly we could blame this on in 2018 but you know the last time we were at 79.80s uh, back adjusted of course on these charts uh, was the 29th of um, october 2018 and so it's just all the way down into the 75s and um, one-way traffic so you know really 7980s is the only key resistance on the upside left here and then we have this huge jump to the to uh well a, a bigger level which we don't need to talk about right now so 7980s is the target for the swing here uh, we have it marked up on the chart down center below on the one hour bars here and uh, you can see this sort of pattern of uh, wedging going on this morning 77 58 uh generally supportive uh, you know it's weak on the breakout though so you know it would be careful here but we are skewed to the upside in oil is uh, to take away from this uh, should it break down on the 77 58 you've got 76 84s as that historical level um coming into play which was actually the high way back here the high of the 23rd of april 2019 and um, so you know pre-covid level uh, for sure uh, so i think you, you are going to find some support down there between there and that sort of high that we had um, last tuesday uh the 28th um you know 77 84 to 60 or sorry 76 84 to 76 67 just uh, quite a bit of support, I think, should lie down there um, with stops triggering below. Um, but, you know, one-way traffic uh, on oil at the moment. Um, let's see. Dollar is actually looking quite weak below the 94.03 handle. Um, looking out on the Dixie on the weekly bar. Well, really, it's quite easy to see that we once we tagged on the trend here, and I will clean this up a little bit, but, and I should take this one off as well. Um, but this is kind of a double uh, closing area. Uh, it's kind of the close on the week of the 26th of October 2020. Um, you know, we have currently closed the prior week at that price. So, you know, we're resistant on the pullback. And I think it's, you know, back down to visit like the 50 or even the 20 EMA for the dollar. And while that happens, uh, while that happens, the euro... Um, can make uh, a, a good attempt at the upside just something for me though as we do look at this euro chart on the daily um it just seems a matter of time before we do trade lower at 15645 um you know because we were simply not able to hold above this trend um through late august early september um so yeah we could have you know a little bit bit of a push to the upside left in this market uh, really, I, I'm only interested in trading this market um, uh, on on the longs, 15.645s. Um, and then I think it's going to be very difficult to try and get on these pushes uh, for now. So, I mean, yeah, maybe obvious to, to get on longs for, uh, with the dollar looking weak. But just knowing how these markets go, it, you know, it can really flip you um, very quickly. Um, and you'd be you know easily on the long side of the trade in a marginal area you know so uh cable yeah i don't really have any views on cable at the moment i think it's kind of trying to resolve itself in this area longs 3574 should be valid given the resistance it put up uh last friday and um, you know that's a pretty safe area to get some tight risk away uh, and you're seeing spoos actually now continuing new highs on day across spoos and dow and nas well not nasdaq right now Okay, that's it for me for today's pre-US. Um, do let me know if you have any questions or queries um, about what we're seeing here in the room. And uh, we have an NFT session uh, set for Friday at 9 a.m. where one of the elite team members from Duggan Capital uh, trading team is going to be talking about how he's minting NFTs and selling these things for four or five times uh the money so uh, it's going to be an interesting session um and an interesting overview on uh, really what is going on inside the nft space um directly from someone who is making these things and selling these things okay have a good session and i'll talk to you later cheers